but I'll shoot you, baby. Get things kicked off here in just a second. Wrestling shows never start on time, do they? <laughs> Hope everybody is doing good on this fine Tuesday evening. Right. 
sure I got the right layer roll in here. We're gonna start out tonight with the NES Classic from 1986, Pro Wrestling. And basically the reason why I chose the games that I did, I played probably close to 20 different games from the NES, Sega Master System, and SNES, and Genesis, the other night. And I picked the ones that allow me to pick my own opponents. So I could develop a card and not leave it up to just everything being random. Maybe I'll go back, if I do something like this again, we'll just do random whatever, because there are a few games like Fire Pro Wrestling that I really wanted to play on stream, but unfortunately they did not allow me to, uh... to choose my own opponents, so kind of a moot point if I don't know who I'm going in. That's... Saturday Night Slam Masters is basically the only game that I'm playing that I'm leaving enough to chance because they have the tag team uh, turmoil thing where it's basically all four guys in the ring at the same time. Uh, and you go from city to city around the world. And I made it to where... If my team of Scorpion and Stinger lose two games, then they're eliminated. King Slender looks like the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, styling and profiling like only he can. Although after that dark side of the ring a few weeks ago, that's really not a uh, <coughs> popular choice anymore. So our first match tonight is going to be Starman, everybody's favorite from the Nintendo Entertainment System Pro Wrestling game. And he is going to be taking on Fighter Hayabusa by luck of the fact that Fire Hayabusa is the default choice to start out with when you're playing against the computer. Because as you can see, as soon as you start changing... Unless you pick Fighter Hayabusa, then you would be playing with Starman as your opponent. So, here we go. There's a whole bunch of punching and kicking going on here. I know I'm going to make myself look like a complete asshole. Going for the pin early, Starman, after the Sabat kick. Hayabusa slamming Starman outside the ring. Starman whipping Hayabusa into the rail. Hayabusa connects with that big boot. Starman with the 360 flip. And the cross body block knocking fighter Hayabusa to the mat makes the cover for only two. Starman going up top. And Hayabusa moves out of the way. Might have gone for that a little too early there, pal. One more time with the cross body block. And Hayabusa again getting out of Starman's way. And they're trading missed kicks right now. Hayabusa finally connected with Starman. Starman again with a cross body block. Gonna try to capitalize on knocking him down. Once again, kicking out at the two count. Fighter Hayabusa with a body slam on Starman. Starman whipping him in. Oh, they collide in mid-ring. Who's going to get up first? Both men to their feet around the same time. Hayabusa really taking it to Starman now. Starman looks like he has got no energy left. What is up, Crazy Coyote? How you doing tonight, my friend? Mid-ring collision once again. Both men have to be virtually drained of all of their energy at this point. 
Starman with the kick and the cover. Way, way, way too far there. Should not have gone that far up. He connects that time. From the top rope, Frog Splash, Hayabusa kicking out once again. Starman just going for that Frog Splash once again. Hayabusa just will not give up. Two minutes, 15 seconds remain in the matchup. Once again, colliding after a whip into the ropes. Starman. Crossbody block again. One, two. Hayabusa just not gonna give up. Finally, Starman coming out victorious. In our opening match this evening, Got a bonus match going here. King Corn Karn running into the ring. Totally did not mean for this match to start. I'm trying to write down the winners as I go here, so we're just gonna go with it. Maybe setting something up for a future pay per view. A whole lot of missed blows going on here from Starman. King Corn Karn with those shocks. Suplexes. Starman outside the ring. Starman lying motionless on the floor. Whipping King Corn Karn into that steel railing. Starman coming off the ropes with a sabat kick. Covers him for two. Big knee to the chin. And King Corn Karn, victim of that 360 suplex or sum somersault kick. Oh, Starman going for that frog splash. Barely kicks out. What the hell he's trying to do there? <clears throat> Maybe he saw Fighter Hayabusa's ghost looking at him from the front row. Again, missing with that cross body block. King Corn Car knocks Starman to the mat and pins him. Starman going down for the count. We're going to switch games here real quick. While we are doing that, hopefully everything stays stable. I was testing this out last night. We're going to be moving over to tag team wrestling now, which is probably one of the worst wrestling games I think I have ever played. I mean, this game, ugh. You want to talk about a button masher? This is it. You've only got two two teams to choose from. The Ricky Fighters, which are down on the left side bottom of the screen. They're the baby faces. And then you have the heel tag team of the Strong Bads. We will be playing as the Ricky Fighters because I don't think you can actually play as the Strong Bads. 
And basically all you do is move around and tap buttons. Again, this is probably one of the worst pro wrestling games you'll ever play. Ricky Fighter, we'll just call him Ricky Fighter number one with the long hair. Getting a few body attacks in on Strong Bad number one. Very limited in the move set on this game. Going for the cover. Strong Bad number one kicking out. Now we got Ricky Fighter number two coming in. Ricky Fighter number two, a mass wrestler. From parts unknown, even his partner doesn't know who he is. Slamming strong bad number one over and over again on the floor. Strong bad number one with an enziguri kick. So Ricky fighter number two. Ricky fighter better make that tag. And the Ricky Fighters lose to the Strong Bads. And once again, we're going to the Be Right Back screen while we switch games. Retro art not being very cooperative right now. We are now going to Shin Nihon Pro Wrestling, which is a 1995 game set in the world of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I think it was intended to originally celebrate the G1 tournament from that year. Hold on just a second here. Let's get a uh, game capture. Make sure we're capturing the right thing. Yes. And this features eight wrestlers from the G1 tournament that year. And the fact that you can play with Great Muda, Van Vader, and Jushin Thunder Liger was enough for me to want to play this game. And unfortunately, it's all in Japanese, so unless you can read Japanese, we're kind of SOL. Let's go into the options. Uh, one round, 15 minute time limit. We're going to put these down to 10 minutes just for time purposes. And we do want the referee. And it's got two game modes. Like I said, the G1 Climax Tournament. Or you can do one-on-one -on -one single or tag match. We will be going to the single match, man versus computer. Again, this actually allows me to pick my opponents. In our first match, I'll be playing as Keji Mudo, AKA the Great Muda. One of the big stars from New Japan, All Japan that really made a name for himself over here in the late 80s and early 90s. And he will be matched up against his arch nemesis, Masahiro Chono, one of the most prolific Japanese wrestlers of his time. The master of the STF submission move that John Cena tries to copy. 
graphics on this game were pretty fucking good for the time. Even better than some of the LJN WWF games that we'll be playing in a few minutes. Playing through this game, though, it's it was very button mashy, as most wrestling games are. And I still haven't really figured out the, much of the move set other than punching and kicking. So there's probably going to be a bunch of punching and a bunch of kicking in this game. And not much actual uh, moves. Masahiro Chono so far getting the advantage on Muda. Chono knocking Muda to the ground. Chono with a big body slam on Muda. Muda really need to get some offense going here. Power bomb. Muda ducking out of the way of that elbow. Pile driver, spike pile driver from Masahiro Chono. I have not had one offensive move so far as Great Muda. Those kicks and punches are connecting outside the ring. idea how to get back in the ring. I think we're both going to get counted out here. Oh, I guess we got to go down. I'll just follow his big ass. There we go. Four seconds to spare. Masahiro Chono doing the work. On Muda, SDF applied. Muda inside the ropes, however. Chono just working Muda down. Again with the STF in the ropes, however, Muda can't get out of the ropes. I'm just gonna stay right there on the rope, I guess. My abysmal attempt here. And Muda tapping out to the SDF. Masahiro Chono dominating. We're going to make this a two out of three falls match. Because I am not happy with the fact I didn't get off any offense in that. I should have looked up how to control this game. I did not. We have no idea what they are saying to each other. He's probably saying, Muda, I just made you my bitch. You don't want none of this no more, big boy. But you're wrong there. We're going to go one more match. Best two out of three. If Muda can't win this one. Chono will be declared the winner. Muda starting out that time hot. Muda with another kick to Chono. Muda now landing with punches and kicks. Chono, however, Muda not able to get away from Chono for any period of time. Chono just staying on top of him, Muda finally. Both men missing with their kick. 
Chono connected with that drop kick as Muda comes off the rope. Muda with one of his own. I really do what, wish I knew what the hell I was doing in this game. I can see why a lot of these E-Fed guys do simulated wrestling. It's kind of hard to try to figure out what moves to do and talk at the same time. These games are so complicated with the button combinations that you need. Obviously, I haven't been doing a good job figuring out the ones for this game at all. I was a little better at the Fire Pro Wrestling game, but again, that one unfortunately had randomized uh, matchups. And I wanted to kind of set a card going into this, being the first time I, I attempted to do something like this. Chono just owned Muda. Muda should have just stayed down. Just automatic. As soon as you go down on that mat, you want to start pressing those buttons to try to get up again. And the STF again applied in the ropes. I'll have more success with Jushin Thunder Liger over Big Van Vader. I, I highly doubt it, though. I actually managed to do more the other night when I was kind of playing through the different characters just to kind of see what was going on. Chono saying, Ah, Muda-san, you came back for more. I told you to stay away, you little bitch. You paid the price. Now, Jushin Thunder Liger take on Big Van Vader, some of the other guys in here. Hiro Hase. Ricky Dozon. Scott Flash Norton. Tony Holm. I forget who the other two were. You'll have to excuse me. We all know who Vader and Liger are, though. Saturday Night Slam Masters, which will be coming up after the WWF Royal Rumble game, also features a character named Grater that looks exactly like Van Vader down to the helmet his build, his entrance to the ring, which you'll see because they actually do ring entrances on that game. Jushin Thunder Liger starting out fast against Vader. Somersault kick to put Vader on the mat. Vader going up, trying to hit Liger. Ooh, Vader got a hold up in that time, however. Liger rolling out of the way of the big man. Body slam and Vader just stomping Liger in the corner. Liger gets free, however. Vader trying to throw Liger through the ropes. Liger prevented himself from going down to the floor. Had a little bit of offense going early, and now it's all Big Van Vader. Vader with a sleeper hold on Liger. Liger desperately trying to kick his way out. And again with the somersault to put Vader on his back, but not doing much damage to the big man. Vader just manhandling the smaller Yal Liger. We knew going into this, this was going to be a big disadvantage to Jushin Thunder Liger, who was going to be relying on his speed to stay away from Big Van Vader. However, it started out kind of quick, and then the big man just kind of took over. 
Liger trying to cover up the best he can. Kicking out at the one. Two count that time. Liger desperately trying to mount some kind of comeback here. He's got no power left whatsoever. It's only a matter of time. Vader with the big splash to add a little insult to injury. Fusion Thunder Liger. Probably going to meet his end right here. The big Vader axe handle avoids that splash. Locking up collar and elbow once again. Vader throwing Liger to the ropes. Hits him with the axe handle smash that time. Liger still, for some reason, able to get up. Liger going out on the floor. Probably not a smart thing to do with somebody like Vader. Kicks or Vader tied up, though, however. Liger building up power with each connection on the kicks. But unfortunately, he's worn down so badly, it's not really going to matter. Back in the ring at the nine count. Vader again whips Juice and Liger into the ropes. Axe handle suplex kicks him over. And Vader suplex... I think Vader's just toying with him right now. He could have easily pinned him. Vader got up on his own accord that time. Vader playing with the almost lifeless Liger like a cat would a dead mouse. Wanting to punish the Japanese star, no doubt, for his early offense. Vader going down on the mat. Liger slides, takes Vader off his feet. Liger again, bouncing off the ropes, using the momentum to take Vader down. And Vader with another axe handle. That might be it. No, Liger does kick out that time. Liger sliding beneath Vader, unfortunately not making the connection this time. And Liger manages to do a cross body block and knock Vader down. Vader with another suplex. Goes for the cover. Liger just does not want to give up. We're in the ropes again. Liger doing whatever he can to stay near those ropes, I got a feeling. And Vader. Suplex right in the middle of the ring. Misses that big splash. Liger once again covering up from the punches and the kicks going outside the ring. The really bad thing about this game is the wrestlers move so slowly. Really not that great of a game mechanically. Liger and Vader just trading blows outside the ring here. Liger back in. And Vader stops him with the big boot to the face. Vader whips Liger into the ropes. Oh, went for the big clothesline. Liger blocked him. Liger tried to go underneath again. Vader catches him. Vader just 
punishing Liger. Sleeper. And that's going to do it. Juice and Thunder Liger coming out on the short end of the stick here against Big Van Vader. It's time! It's time! It's time for you to go back and lick your wounds, little man. You can't beat the big bull, Van Vader! Egyptian Liger, however, gave it his best shot. But unfortunately, coming up short. That's going to conclude the action from Shin Nihon Pro Wrestling. Once again, switch games. We're going to the WWF now. And action with the Royal Rumble. What is up, Deshnack? How are you doing tonight, my friend?